Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Max Financial Services Limited Q4 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Amrit Singh, Chief Financial Officer, Max Financial Services Limited and Max Life Insurance Company Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, we welcome you to the earnings call of Max Financial Services for the year ended March 31st, 2024. Our results were made available on our website uh, a few minutes ago and also on the stock exchanges. Uh, as always, I'm joined by Prashant Tipati, MDMC of Max Life Insurance. I will request Prashant to share key developments of the quarter and insights into 12 months. Uh, Thank you, Amrit, and good evening to everyone. Thank you very much for taking out time for the call share. At the onset of FY24, we set our aspirations to increase our market shares, broaden our distribution network, finalize the access transaction, and achieve our targeted profitability metrics. I'm very happy to share that we have made significant strides in fulfilling these commitments through dedicated efforts and a steadfast dedication to serving both our customers and shareholders. To begin with, I would like to provide an update on the access transaction. On April 17, 2024, Axis Bank infused 1,612 crores as planned by subscribing to 14.26 crore equity shares of MaxLife on a preferential basis, resulting in the Axis Group's collective stake rising to 19.02%. This capital infusion not only strengthens our capital position and solvency margins, but also reinforces our partnership with Axis Bank paving the way for a more resilient and prosperous franchise. Traditionally, Axis entities hold the option to acquire an additional 0.98% stake from Max Financial Services through a secondary transaction, which will take the overall stake of Axis Bank in Max Life Insurance to the planned 20 percent I would also like to share an important development with you. I would like to inform you that the Board of Directors of Max Life Insurance has approved the appointment of Mr. Manish Sharda, Executive Director, Access Bank, and Mr. Arjun Chaudhary, Group Executive, Access Bank, as the additional directors on the board of MaxLab Insurance. Both have been nominated by Access Bank as their representatives on the board uh, of MaxLab Insurance, and they bring wealth of diverse experience to aid MaxLab Insurance further in its ambitions. I think with their, own, with their experience uh, in financial services world, uh, they will add a lot of value to our growth and our aspirations. Transitioning to our business updates, I would like to focus on the key strategic areas like I always do. Firstly, talking about predictable and sustainable growth by building distribution. Uh, <clears throat> very happy to share that our full year individual adjusted rate first year premium sales experienced a robust growth of 16%, surpassing the private sector's growth rate of 8% by two times, in total industry growth rate of 5% by more than three times resulting in a market share increase of 61 basis points for FY24. In quarter four of FY24, we achieved a market share of 10.4% compared to 8.6% in quarter one, demonstrating consistent quarter on quarter market share gains. Uh, this growth also comes to the back of a very large march that we had as an industry last year. On the basis of APE, we have grown by 19%. This growth can be attributed to a 20% increase in the number of policies, which is more than two times <clears throat> of private average number of policy growth rates, primarily fueled by a strong 28% growth in crop channels APE. Excluding one-off sales from last year, crop channels have grown by a remarkable 44%. Offline crop channels witnessed 18% growth on actual basis and 34% on normalized basis. Our agency channel experienced a noteworthy 54% surge in recruitment, establishing itself as the fastest growing agency amongst the top 10 players in the industry. Direct customer acquisition channels also enhanced their efficiency and ventured into new verticals, significantly contributing to overall growth. 
in the online channel we maintained our leadership position the online channel expanded by 79% in FY24 underscoring our capability to rapidly expand our digital business our banka channels ap experienced a growth of 12% driven by all banka partners it is noteworthy that we have consistently maintained our counter share in both of our major banka partners namely axis bank at 70% and yes bank at 58% year after year Furthermore, our group credit life business grew by 62%, contributing to an overall company level APE growth of 19% in FY24. In terms of expansion of our distribution reach in FY24, we effectively onboarded 40 new, 42 new partners, including two banks, 20 new group credit life partners, 14 online and offline brokers, and six corporate agents. we anticipate these partnerships to become a significant part of our total business in the upcoming financial year and going forward furthermore we expanded our distribution network by establishing a representative office in dubai this strategic move extends our presence in the gulf region amplifies brand visibility and provides a seamless approach for our non resident indian customers in summary our distribution strategy is in line with our growth forecast for the upcoming year and we are highly confident in maintaining the momentum that we achieved so far in FY24 uh <clears throat> product innovation was a key component of uh, driving growth as well as uh, our profitability our strategic commitment to becoming a premium product company in the industry drives us to continuously enhance our offerings in FY24 we launched several innovative products across different segments which facilitated secular growth except for non-power savings impacted by high base effects these product launches include <clears throat> the swag variant on power design with enhanced features focusing on liquidity protection and retirement uh, step which is a design in protection with industry first features of cover continuous benefit swag elite which is featuring an industry first design of guarantee endowment Swag pension targeting the retirement category with differential industry first options. A super rider offering the option to receive a return of premium upon maturity, and small and mid cap momentum index funds launched to enhance savings mix in e-commerce. These launches, totaling 37 industry leading interventions, have positioned us at the forefront of meeting customer needs, contributing to approximately 45% of new business sales in FY24. Furthermore, our emphasis on selected product segments is evident in the growth of our retail protection, health, and annuity segments, comprising 40, 14% total APE in 12 months of FY24 and growing by 61%. This led to our individual new business, Sum Assured, achieving rank three in the private industry, uh, with a growth of 33% on full year basis ahead of industry growth rates. all these achievements culminated in achieving new business margin of 26.5% within our guiding guided range of 26 to 27 right at the midpoint in quarter 4 fy24 margins improved sequentially to 28.6% as operational leverage kicked in uh, with seasonal trends you would have also noticed that quarter on quarter our margin continued to improve from quarter 1 Uh, where we were close to 22% to quarter 4 where we landed at 28.6%. Our margin outcomes are a result of calibrated approach to expanding market share. This involves active participation in the unit linked market contributing 35% compared to 27% last year alongside the introduction of innovative product solutions that balance customer needs and shareholder outcomes. Moving forward, we anticipate to maintain our high growth a growing faster than industry private industry and gaining market share and we expect our vnb uh, growth to be in line <coughs> or near about our ap growth customer obsession uh, also yielded outcomes on the customer outcomes uh, max life has cultivated a customer centric culture by embedding a focus on customer satisfaction throughout every stage of our value chain This commitment has been recognized by our customers who have ranked us number 2 among India's leading insurers for delivering best in class customer experience in the fourth edition of Hansa Research uh, 
researches prestigious QES reports. They have commended us for our products, digital support, streamlined documentation processes, and efficient policy issuance. Our culture extends beyond our mere transactions and policies, as evidenced by our consistently improving brand consideration scores, which positions us among the top brands in the sector. Furthermore, our exceptional claim paid experience ratio of 99.51 in FY23 reflects our steadfast dedication to our customers. We gave customer loyalty through Net Promoter Score. We are pleased to report that uh, we have witnessed a four-point increase in our customer NPS, rising from 52 in March 23 to 56 in March 24. <clears throat> our touch point NPS improved to 74, uh, improving by six percentage points, uh, and NPS uh, overall NPS uh, in relationship increased by two points. Additionally, Max Life proudly maintains its leadership position in terms of 13th month persistency for the number of policies. Specifically, our 13th month persistency for regular or limited pay premium stood at the highest ever at 87%, an improvement of about 300 basis points. Our 61st month persistency was at 58% for the period ending March 2024, and across all the cohorts, we have witnessed reasonably significant improvements. Furthermore, our grievance incidence rate has improved by 20 points in FY24, underscoring the trust our policyholders place in that price. Talking about the other ingredients for our success, which is digitization for efficiency and intelligence, I'd like to share that our commitment to technology permeates various aspects of our operations, including product launches, prospecting, onboarding, and customer service. Embracing agile methodologies, we have achieved operational excellence and heightened efficiency. Our ongoing investment in leveraging AI and digital technologies to modernize legacy systems has resulted in the onboarding of significant new business with minimal human intervention in underwriting. This has substantially increased our capacity to process peak month business with minimal human resource augmentation. Additionally, migrating to our core policy admin system to the cloud has improved system performance by threefold. Our consistent focus on enhancing the e-commerce journey has led to an increase in purchase net promoter scores which now rivals that of best-in-class digital native players. By leveraging generative AI, we have introduced Safe Gene, a virtual agent training companion uh, for frontline sales and launched several marketing and product campaigns. These initiatives have not only facilitated hyper-personalized communication, but also significantly reduced development time. These strategic initiatives empower us to operate more efficiently make data-driven decisions, and enhance customer experience and adapt to evolving business landscape. In summary, uh, our efforts to fuel growth have yielded results in line with our expectations in FY24, and you would, you would notice that it is consistent with all the guidance that we provided throughout the years. We remain committed to augmenting our capacity and developing new business models to sustain, enhance, and enhance our performance levels. Uh, with this uh, comprehensive coverage of our business, I'm now going to hand it over to Amrit, who will provide an update on our financial performance. Over to you, Amrit. Thanks, Prashant. Uh, just key financial metrics. Uh, MFSL consolidated revenue, excluding investment income, stands at 29,011 crores, a growth of 16% in FY24. Consolidated PAT, for MFSL, stands at rupees 393 crores. For Max Life, the gross premiums has grown by 17% to 29,529 crores, and renewal premium have also grown by 13% to 18,506 crores. Value of new business in FY24 stands at 1,973 crores versus 1,949 crores for FY23. The NBM for quarter four a sequential improvement quarter on quarter stands at 28.6, and for 12 months, we stand at 26.5%. Embedded value, end of 31st March 2024, is 19,494 crores, with an operating ROEV of 20.2%. Policyholder OPEX to GWP is 13.8%, and max life profit after tax stands at 360 crores. With infusion of 1,612 crores of capital by Access Bank into Max Life 
in the month of April. The solvency adjusted will stand around about 206% for max life, which is sufficient for us to drive a growth momentum. Additionally, with this infusion of capital, the embedded value will also be around 21,100 crores. Assets under management for MaxLife have crossed 1.5 lakh crores during the quarter and are at around 1.51 lakh crores at end of March 2024 and year-on-year -year growth of 23%. Uh, so overall, you know, strong performance across financial and non-financial parameters and at this point, we will be very happy to take any questions you may have and I'll request uh, the moderator to open the floor for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask questions, please press star and one. The first question is from the line of Avinash Singh from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Uh, a strong set of performance. A uh, couple of questions. The first one is on embedded value walk. Uh, the non-operating variance uh, that at, uh, I presume it will be mostly economic variance and that appears slight negative. Now, if we look the way equity has behaved as well as the yield uh, kind of a movement that you have given in slide 59, there should be some sort of a, you know, contribution from both the factors coming in as a, a minor positive, maybe a one or anywhere between one to two percent positive. But here it's negative. So it is something more than their economic variance and just change what I am missing here. I mean, if you can clarify on that. And the second question, if I come to particularly the Q4 part of our gap results, I know that max life gap results, I guess, is still not out. Now, uh, I understand, I mean, uh, a large part of probably uh, the uh, gap uh, uh, profit decline or other turning to losses could be due to new uh, business strain. But can you help? I mean, is this new business strain totally a... Uh, a reflection of product mix change only because I mean last year also you had a strong amount of non farm typically again had high strain. So is it new business uh, only due to new business strain? Is it uh, a new business strain only due to product mix changes or uh, you know a sort of a payout increases or any sort of a weakness in back book uh, supply chain? Listen, if you can help, thanks. Uh, thanks, Avinashji. I'll take this question. Uh, on uh, non-operating variance, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, this is all economic variance in nature. And uh, that is a mix of the proportion of equity that we hold and the debt uh, portfolio that we have. So on the equity side, uh, uh, as the markets have moved up, we have also experienced positive uh, variance, uh, almost to the tunes of around 550 crores as positive. But uh, on the debt side, because as interest curves have moved up, uh, has no, sorry, moved down, uh, the liabilities also have to be repriced, and there is a negative movement on the debt side, which kind of offsets each other to give a negative number of 54 crores of non-operating variance that you see for ourselves. And, you know, some bit of these variances uh, are actually a bit of mix of the proportion of equity you have in ULEPs, the proportion of shareholder equity that you have, proportion of shareholder as an overall uh, portion of your uh, uh, EV, and proportion of you know group business and single premium business that you will be carrying. So some of these factors actually have an interplay, and but largely these are economic variants, transitory in nature, and uh, you know these kind of come uh, um, back because most of our portfolios hold the maturity. Uh, on uh, your specific question on quarter four profits, uh, and I think you are kind of ascribing to the decline that you have seen. I think the predominant reason there for that decline is, and you know this is also linked to some bit of operating variance that you have seen, where there is a negative operating variance, which has come out of some assumption tightening that we have done proactively as part of our regular annual business. Uh, so some bit of that negative uh, element has kind of flown, in addition to the product mix aspect that you spoke of. Uh, so this operating variance uh, would be mostly uh, around uh, expenses or some, uh, you know, uh, mortality persistence reasons? 
So it's uh, uh, on from a mortality perspective, some bit of tightening on the group credit portfolio uh, that we have done. And uh, uh, the second element of this is a certain lapse in persistency assumptions that have happened across the portfolio. But I, I'll kind of say it's the over long, long, long duration tightening that we have done, and this is a bit proactive at our end uh, to be more conservative about it. Okay, okay. So in, in the EV world, also the operating variants uh, will have kind of a, some positive impact coming from maybe your persistency and all, and some negative from uh, mortality and such changes, mortality variances. Am I right? So this assumption tightening is negative on both the sides that I spoke of, but uh, uh, obviously uh, within the walk there are variances which are positive and negative, but uh, uh, I mean that's a, that's a mix. For example, in operating variance we'll have some negative in our ULIP books, but overall it's, uh, uh, it's I think the operating variance is, uh, the variance, experience variance is largely flattish. Okay, thanks, thanks. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we'd like to request participants to please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we request you to rejoin the queue. We take the next question from Supratim Dutta from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. So I'll just continue, you know, from the first participant's question. So on the negative operating variance, could you, you know, tell us what led to, you know, the mortality tightening on the group credit life book, you know, what uh, made you, uh, you know, tighten the estimates here? And uh, typically, you know, you know, how long and experience do you look at? Is it two years or three years before you tighten, you know, the, the estimates? If you, if you could throw some color on that, that would be one. Two is, you know, in the last one and a half years, you have formed several, um, you know, non-access bank partnerships. If you could give us some color, what is, you know, the counter share, be it, you know, from NAG bank or, you know, DCB bank, and how are you looking at, you know, expanding, you know, the counter share in these banks? That would be very helpful. Thank you. So, I will, I will take the second question first, and then I will request somebody to, to talk about the operating variances. Uh, we we signed up uh, five to six banks over last uh, uh, last one year or so, and uh, uh, suffice it to say that uh, you know of course we were the third or fourth or fifth player, so uh, it takes a while actually to increase the presence and the counter share. But I will say the counter share varies between uh, eight or nine percent. Uh, to about 60% in different uh, accounts. And at my personal level, I track whether our counter share is increasing or not month on month. And I'm very happy to share that we have witnessed us consolidating our presence, increasing counter share by every passing month. Uh, so I'm very optimistic that as time passes, uh, you know, that will become a potent source of revenue generation uh, for max life insurance. And our uh, desire to partner with many more banks it just continues. We will remain very aggressive on each one of them. We are leaving no stones unturned, either in terms of deployment of resources or product, uh, and uh, we are fairly aggressive on all the new banks that we are acquiring. Uh, Amrit, uh, uh, for you to talk yeah. about the operating variance. Actually, it's, you know, firstly, it's a very small number. It's only, uh, you, you will see in our walk, uh, 57 crores. This is our annual process. We do do up our assumptions uh, annually. And uh, there is nothing, you know, out of the ordinary or unusual that I can call there for. As part of our regular process, uh, the assumptions have been tightened. Understood, understood. And just one data keeping question. Could you let us know what is the, within the proprietary channel, what is the proportion of agency versus non, you know, you know your website and other channels? Uh, actually, on the uh, in our slides, slide number 22 and 23, you can see, you know, we have provided a breakup of offline and online uh, activities. Okay. Provided. Okay. So offline is entirely agency. Yeah. Offline is agency plus our, our direct selling teams, which are actually work on the uh, uh, the customers whose agent have actually left the company, where the upsell and cross sell is done. Uh, so in some sense, it's quasi you can call it. Uh, uh, you know, agency itself, but uh, it, it, it includes in our parlance is agency and direct channels, and uh, online is commerce. Understood. Understood. Okay, 
Thank you. Next question is from Adarsh from Inam Holdings. Please go ahead. Hi. Um, thanks for taking my question. Um, just wanted to check um, that there has been some um, – seems that there's a discussion on the surrender regulations again, right? Uh, um, December we had the draft. We had some clarification in March. So if you could share um, any feedback and what um, you know, and I understand it's not yet out, but how how would you mitigate if if you see any uh, changes in what was proposed in uh, March? Yeah, firstly, quite aligned to uh, you know the regulatory push on creating value for uh, uh, for uh, for the policyholders or customers. So you know, quite aligned on that view. Uh, you know, it's premature for me, but. Uh, I'm, I'm reasonably confident that uh, overall, uh, when the final uh, guidelines come or uh, uh, you know the guidances come, it will create win-win for all the constituents. Uh, there is a consultative process which is currently going on, uh, not concluded. So I will request that we just wait for the final guidelines to come out. Got it, Prashant. Uh, that's it from my side. Thanks a lot, and a great quarter. Thanks, Adarsh. Thank you. Next question is from Swarna Mukherjee from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and congrats on a good set of numbers. So, uh, first question is on the margin side. So, uh, I mean, on a uh, sequential basis also, uh, I think the mix has become slightly adverse with higher share of QA. I just wanted to understand the expansion that we are seeing in the uh, margin profile. Uh, how much should we attribute to uh, some kind of cost absorption given that I think the fixed cost proportion would be lower in the fourth quarter? Uh, if, you, if you could uh, uh, you know, give some color on that and how much maybe you know at a product specific level margin expansions are happening. So a uh, little bit more detail on how we should uh, read the margin expansion between the quarters. And uh, secondly, on uh, uh, on the uh, structure uh, simplification process, if you could give us uh, some color on the uh, timelines, uh, uh, so a little, a small proportion of stake needs to be acquired by Axis, and then I think uh, there was a process of reverse merger as well. So if you could give us some sense on you know what timelines should look at. So <clears throat> overall, I think the margin profile uh, to me uh, improved quarter on quarter. Like I mentioned to you, every quarter the margin went up. Uh, peaking at 28.6%. Uh, definitely, year-on-year -year margin, you would, uh, you know, like we were guiding all along, will come lower, predominantly because of two reasons. A, the mix on loan power going down, and B, the proportion of ULIP going up. However, typically in quarter four, our margins are highest because that's a, uh, that's a higher scale quarter, and uh, uh, we do compute on the basis of actual cost of every quarter, and hence you will find typically that in quarter one, our margins are lower, and they increase by quarter four. <clears throat> I think uh, while the yearly proportion was going up, uh, uh, the, the overall pedal on uh, driving protection, uh, driving health, driving annuities uh, remain a remained a focus area. Uh, you know, we didn't mention, but we also uh, drove rider quite aggressively. So overall, uh, these product categories helped us optimize our margins as we went along, uh, despite higher share, share of ULIP. And the objective was to uh, create a good balance between sales growth and margin uh, outcomes, and I think we successfully did that. So uh, those are uh, uh, those are reasons. On your question on structures, uh, you know, of course, we are very mindful. We, uh, we uh, you know, the access transaction to a great extent is is consummated. The, we'll wait for the balance 0 0.98 to be to be done, which hopefully should be done uh, over uh, you know next few months. And uh, we will initiate in the process uh, of uh, uh, the, the restructure. My, my sense is that it will take anywhere between 18 months to 24 months because this involves an CLT process, etc. Uh, we remain committed, and we will pursue that journey as time progresses. Sure, sir. Very helpful. Just a follow-up uh, on the margin front. So uh, for the uh, coming year, uh, would your guidance remain at the similar level which you had highlighted earlier? Or uh, should we expect, uh, you know, a slightly higher range now? The market is very dynamic, so, uh, you know, uh, I would I would restrain myself to give you an exact number, generally. Uh, we are looking at a sales growth of 
high teams uh, and the objective will be to grow faster than the market so, so that we are capturing market share more and more. And uh, on GNB growth, hence, uh, we will definitely be uh, uh, teams which will be either at the same level of growth as sales or marginally lower. So that's the target that I'll give. Uh, let me let me not push myself to give you an, an exact margin number because things are very dynamic. There are things changing, regulatory change. There are, of course, uh, you know, product mix related things that we need to manage throughout the year. So let's, uh, let's keep it at that level for the time being. All right, sir. Uh, thank you. This is very helpful. And all the best for the project. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from Shreya Shivani from CLSA. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, I have one question, uh, basically uh, trying to understand that uh, the great uh, agency addition that you have done this year. Uh, now, uh, Max has always had the highest agent productivity uh, on street. So for these agents which you've onboarded this year, uh, as in by the end of FY24, uh, fair to say that the productivity increase would come through FY25 or it takes more than, more time than than one year. Uh, if some clarity on that would be useful. And uh, also another question is the banker channel this, this year only grew at 12%. And um, given that this base, what kind of improvement or, or uh, that, that we could expect in FY25 on the low base of banker channel for this year? This is, these are my two questions. Thank you. Yeah, of course, uh, you know, when you hire agents, uh, you know, some of them uh, increase their productivity and hence our bet on agency remains uh, fairly high and uh, uh, we are very optimistic about driving, continuing to drive growth in agency going forward. Uh, as far as bank channels are concerned, um, you know, we, we are going to put the best foot forward, uh, completely enthused about, uh, you know, access to participation in our business, uh, they, uh, they've increased uh, participation in our board and I think the overall collective ownership. So, uh, you know, we will work very aggressively on the bank side also. Uh, with new partners that we signed up, I think uh, the overall optimism on bank side will be, uh, will be more than how it was in FY24. Got it. And is it fair to say that next year also your agency and probably prop channels will manage to do better than Banker or will we, will we see yeah. uh, uh, better, some growth pick up in Banker? That's the intent. Uh, if you were to look at our prop channel growth rate on a just FI basis over the last five years, it is 21%, which is quite remarkable. And we hope that we are able to maintain that kind of growth rate or better. Got it. That's useful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Prayesh Jain from Motila Roswal. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, congrats on a great set of numbers. Just extending the previous question on access bank growth next year, uh, you know, there has been, uh, uh, I think, uh, with the city acquisition, there is Tata that has come in. Uh, Aditya Birla is something that access bank has tied up. So uh, how do you see the... Uh, wallet share kind of, you know, uh, moving to uh, max light and also given the challenges on uh, access bank uh, wanting, having to raise deposits, how do you kind of look at this entire piece of access bank given these uh, contours? Uh, secondly, on the non-power business, you know, what kind of pricing action uh, we would have taken in, uh, in possibly um, Q4 or afterwards? Uh, and, you know, what is the kind of profitability, uh, product level profitability that would have changed in FY24 versus uh, currently? I don't know so, uh, so answering uh, the easier question first, on non-power, uh, all our products, uh, large products stand revised. We have increased the rate because uh, the yield curves have altered. Uh, and uh, it just shows our commitment to preserve our margin. Uh, so we have increased uh, our rates to ensure that the margin is, uh, is protected. Uh, as far as the, uh, the growth from banker channels are concerned, of course, uh, you know, uh, there is a banking ecosystem and, uh, uh, you know, the, the push for, uh, for increasing deposits, et cetera, is very common in the bank space. You would have noticed that uh, uh, not just, you know, our bank uh, where we saw 12% growth, but overall as a bank ecosystem, the insurance sales was a, a bit tepid last year. Uh, but hopefully, uh, you know, going forward, 
the the push on driving free income will be equally important and uh, that gives me optimism uh, that uh, the growth from axis bank will be either at the same level or better on uh, in terms of uh, city acquisition i would like to share with you that uh, we do participate on that counter and yes you're right uh, the bank counter has been opened to tata which got opened in the month of december and uh, i think for aditi billa it is it is going to happen very soon uh, the participation of these two new players is not on pan india basis it is uh, restricted to certain geographies uh, the banks stated stance on uh counter share max life insurance is between 65 to 70% and it was very publicly communicated uh, by the management of axis bank uh, so uh, <clears throat> i think we we must look at that corridor and any which way is that's a very healthy mix of counter share that max life insurance should expect so i remain optimistic uh, despite uh, inclusion of uh, of a new player in the month of december our counter share, share remained at 70% and uh, i'm just Uh, you know we will work towards either preserving uh, or keeping at the same level or marginally lower at axis bank counter either which way is not materially impacting the sales growth for us from axis bank thank you so much thank you on the second question that you asked uh, yeah. okay thank you The next question is from Madhukar Ladda from Novama Wealth. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, first, I think on the uh, economic uh, variance, you mentioned that uh, because interest rates went down, the liabilities got uh, repriced, and as a result, uh, the mark-to-market, even on your uh, bond book, uh, uh, sort of fell short. Uh, to cover that uh, right and hence that's why we have a negative variance also because of the interest rate movement i was just wondering over here that shouldn't the policy holders liabilities uh, already be covered by adequate hedges and uh, your shareholders uh, fixed income book uh, should still have uh, resulted in a, a positive uh, variance so uh, uh, i mean uh, that that would be my expectation maybe you can help me understand this better uh, second if i look at your uh, shareholder uh, or back book surplus sorry that also the growth of there has uh, come off in this year so last year we were at about 1563 crores uh, this year we are at about 1627 crores uh, uh, so why has that happened and is it uh, also getting impacted by the uh, operating uh, variance or the tightening of operating assumptions that we've done in this year uh, and and maybe the, even the increased liability also because of the rate movement is that impacting the back book surplus uh, as well uh, that's the second question and uh, other uh, your vnb has a negative uh, mix and margins does that uh, include the same uh, reasons uh, which is like the group credit life portfolio uh, negative variance and the persistency assumption change right these these things are are, are are they the similar reasons which are sort of impacting both the ev walk and the vnb walk i just wanted to uh, get a clarification on that sir uh, madhugar uh, i i think uh, some of the questions you have answered yourself in the uh, uh, your hypothesis itself i said the easy one first the back book surplus decline uh, you are right it is to link with assumption tightly uh, which uh, has kind of you know had an impact also last year we in the back book surplus if you see an unusual growth uh, so there is a bit of a base effect also which is in play in back book surplus uh, on uh, uh, your economic variance Uh, so you i mean you you're absolutely right as the uh, the 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 yields have come off the liabilities have increased which has to be adjusted for now our net worth as a percentage of ev is and you're right i mean in, within the shareholder portion of it uh, this gives a positive uh, variance uh, because those assets are actually free and not covering a particular liability but that 
proportion is much smaller than the overall negative that comes on the policy holder side and that's the reason why i shared you know that uh, that the even though there is a positive 480 85 crores of positive equity variance there is a equivalent a negative uh, debt variance also which is coming to play uh, lastly on uh, vnb uh, the uh, actually assumption chain there has not have such a material impact because Uh, most of these products when they get priced uh, we are cognizant of some of these things and at the time of pricing itself we make those corrections and large part of our vnb does so through of many recently priced products uh, during the year uh, the large part of uh, the variance there is to do with product mix and in certain categories of uh, annuities and protection there is some bit of margin uh, shrinkage as well but largely the answer lies in uh, product mix variance which has happened in uh okay understood just dwelling a little further on the uh, on the economic variance so the liability side repricing on the policy holders uh, or, or, or the policy holders sort of liability repricing that should ideally be hedged right and that should ideally have been sort of covered by whatever fraud or party paid bonds or any other or the funds that you already received towards that or, or or is it sort of unhedged and and uh, maybe you can uh, help me understand that actually so if you have from a perspective of the hedge part of your liability your understanding is correct it is of course immune to since it's hedged so it's immune to the movement in interest rate but it's also a function of uh, the different product mix which maybe primarily the as amrit rightly pointed out at the beginning of the call that it is mainly to do with the single premium business on group group side annuity side where you, know, you have received the premium and the assets are invested up front so depending on that product mix uh, mix of that business within the portfolio the movement could be different so hence is a function of uh, the shape of the curve how it has changed it's not a parallel shift second it's a function of various product categories and the mix of assets backing those hence if you look at the overall impact it does so for the hedge part of the business you are right the impact is more or less immune to movement in interest rate and one final question what would be the positive economic variance of the shareholder fixed income book uh maybe i can get to provide that to you separately i don't have that number at this point in time but i can provide that to you separately understood understood thank you and all the best thank you much sir thank you the next question is from nishin chawate from kota constitutional equities please go ahead hi uh, thanks for taking my question uh nashin two questions one was uh, on the group protect side uh you know did you slow down consciously this quarter uh, group pro- <coughs> group credit life has done very well for us actually we have we have been growing uh, that quite significantly uh, we have grown around 59% for the full year question on gpl is the question on group term life uh, question yeah the the are yeah, the overall group protection uh, particularly yeah. yeah so we we can break group in two parts uh the group uh, uh, credit life where we have seen very good growth uh mm-hmm. we have 59% year on year which is significantly higher than the industry and we are trying to build that book uh group term life uh, any which way is a very tactical play for us uh so you know we are not huge players and neither do we intend to become very huge uh you know we saw a good growth of 25% on year on year basis but quarter four slowed down a bit for us which is okay i think the competition in that space is very severe and you know we don't uh, write on to business at uh, you know at on deals which we don't believe will generate enough outcomes for us uh, no uh, you said that uh, 59% growth is for the year or for the quarter uh, 59% growth was for the year uh, for, group for, for group credit life for group credit life do we have the number for quarter 4 i think even yeah. quarter 4 what a phone number is uh, 168% oh that's right yeah this support the 150% growth for the quarter for in group credit life and and if you can just uh, give the share the absolute number of group credit business that you've done for the year 
I see this that also has been provided on the slide. If you go to slide uh, in the investor deck, uh, in this slide into that. Uh, yeah, it's uh, on uh, uh, page number 13. So this is oh, you, you want the group credit like separately? Uh, no, Nishin, allow us to send it to you separately if that is okay with you. It's not perfect, handy. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Just uh, one or two more questions. Uh, you know, on the uh, online company side, if you could just uh, sort of, uh, you know, help us recollect what all does it uh, include? So, uh, I think, uh, oh, okay. Uh, I think it, it does include uh, all the aggregators' business as well as business that comes out on our website. Got it. And then what is the right to win in this business? I mean, if you've grown at 80% in this business, you know, how do we think about, uh, you know, this growth continuing going forward and what is the right to win? I think it's a very dynamic area and uh, the only thing that should give you a confidence of, uh, of uh, ability to constantly execute. If you were to look at our growth over the last five years, uh, the, the growth rate has remained similar. We must be growing at the rate of 50% for the last four, five years. Actually, this business... Uh, has uh, grown six, seven times over the last five years, maybe more. So uh, <clears throat> I think the right to win is uh, a very dynamic approach to the market. Uh, uh, in, in uh, of course, uh, if you were to break it into two parts, mostly looking at uh, 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 at uh, protection, where we have been market leaders, it's a combination of uh, the claims experience, your ability to underwrite faster, uh, looking at uh, newer cohorts. Uh, innovation as well as uh, appropriate pricing, those are things for the right to win. If you were to look at savings market, of course, savings uh, uh, market is, is again very dynamic and uh, your ability to constantly innovate, come up with offerings which are attractive to the customers uh, and leveraging every possible opportunity, including Julep, is uh, the right to win. Uh, so, uh, really, uh, you know, it's, it's a core ability on innovation, on agility, on uh, creating great journeys for the customers as well as product designs which appear attractive. Those are things that I will say are, are key competencies. And uh, if your growth in, you know, other bank assurance partnerships which again, you know, have, you know, face competition with other insurers and, uh, you know, the online, uh, you know, the, the online proprietary is sort of faster than the, than the company growth. Then you would probably, you know, kind of, uh, you know, constantly have this pressure of higher payouts, right? Because these channels will typically be higher payouts and probably you know, lower margin than the rest of the, uh, the than the other two channels. Uh, you you mean the uh, you mean the online channels? Yeah. So I mean both online proprietary as well as other bank assurance partnerships. Now both are channels in which you are kind of competing with, uh, you know, other insurers head on. So, yeah, of course. Well, <clears throat> uh, of course, you're competing, but at the end of the day, uh, the, what plays a big role is, uh, you know, what kind of product mix are you able to maintain, which are the areas where you're winning, uh, and uh, with a combination of uh, protection as well as uh, savings collectively, uh, I think you stand a fair chance of making reasonable uh, profits for the company, and which is the strategy that we follow. So if one were to choose uh, to write only savings and that too in ULAP, et cetera, which is hugely attractive to the customer, maybe the margin profile will go down. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, the answer lies in balancing the product mix. No, so the, the point I'm trying to make is that these two channels are growing at a faster pace than Access Bank and, uh, you know, the uh, agency or offline proprietary, as we call it, right? And, and typically the margins in these two channels would be lower than, uh, you know, the, the Access Bank and off, offline proprietary. So, you know, in that sense, faster growth in these channels would probably, you know, directionally put more pressure on margin. You know, yeah, but, you know, of course, there are multiple other ways uh, uh, to to do that by, uh, I mean, really maybe at at uh, a channel level, at, uh, uh, you know, for example, cost of acquisition level, uh, maybe you're right, but this, at the end of the day, uh, you're adding so many customers to uh, your franchise, uh, which, uh, you know, potentially you could cross-sell at some point of time uh, and, uh, you know, you know, look at maybe lifetime value of some of these customers. So, 
at, at this point of time, I will say uh, we are uh, we are not so fussed about uh, channel level margins and whether we need to grow a channel or not. I think what we are trying to do is uh, figuring out ways to preserve our margins. For example, add more GCL to our books. Uh, you know, looking at growing our agency. Uh, constantly working on mix on other channels, etc. And that's the strategy that we will follow. Increasing riders, more attachments of riders to our protection, do the things that we are trying. Got it. Thank you very much and all the best. Nishin, just uh, because you asked that question and I have that number now, group credit life was around 1,122 crores. Uh, this is uh, single premium. For the year. And yeah. Group term life was around 301 crores for the year. 301 crores for the year. Okay, then that, that, that is up 59% year over year. That's what it is. Thank you. Next question is from Sanket Goda from Avendis Park. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. See, I, um, so, I'm, I'm sorry for hopping on this economic governance number. I mean, if, you, if you look at the other insurance companies, they, they typically reported 4 to 5 percentage uh, positive economic governance number uh, in the current year. But our number is negative. I, I'm still not able to understand why this number is negative. Is it largely because you did more annuity in the current year? And ELM mismatched, uh, 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 cropped up in the business because of the annuity business, um, and, and therefore, therefore, the negative operating variance has come. Uh, because, because it's still, still very difficult to comprehend that it's a negative number, uh, given uh, for others it is three and a half to five percent positive uh, in, in in economic variance, and you are operating the same macro. Uh, so, so that's point number one. The the second question is is that. Uh, uh, see, your individual protection growth is very solid in the first quarter. Now, no, honestly, if I look at it from the full year point of view, uh, you, you are even bigger than IPRO and uh, uh, SGFC Life in absolute rupees growth in premium number. Your market leader, if, if I take it as a pure term, I just, just wanted to understand this this uh, this business growth is largely driven because because you have some change in your range and city or or your ability to underwrite has become more smoother than what it was in the past. Um, and what is leading to that growth? Because, because your growth seems to be very high. I mean, if you can give a little color there, it, it will be useful. And, and lastly, on, on the online business, which has done very well, uh, if you, I mean, so you indicated the point, but if you can break down that growth into your own website and, and maybe third party channel like PB or any web aggregator in that sense. Firstly, on, uh, on no, you're, you, you're asking a question on non operating variance comparison with the competition. I, I can only hypothesize. Yeah, I'm saying economically. EV, uh, EV has elements of uh, many, many layering there. And uh, I can only, and I said this before in the call also, I think uh, uh, no two EVs are comparable uh, in that particular manner. You'll have to look at percentage of unit link business in some of these players and further within unit link business, what is the percentage of equity? for one player versus another because that has a bearing on, you know, the positive effects of equity coming through. You should also look at percentage of shareholder net worth as a, a proportion of uh, embedded value because on the shareholder side, any of these variances will be a positive variance. Uh, and further again, there are also components of equity becomes important. And lastly, uh, then you have to look at uh, the nature of uh, the EVs others have with respect to quantum of single premium that they are writing. Because single premium, you know, immediately you lock in. So you get that realization as positive because of the changes that has come through. So I'll just say that, you know, these are actually computed the way we compute and the economic variance is the predominant reason. And these are transitory in nature. And I'll kind of stop at that. I will not be able to give you a specific answer that why, you know, one other player is higher and why we are low because I don't have insight. Uh, but but uh, I'm just, just, just a small thing. In, in annuity, are we largely deferred annuity? And that's why that's why we are not getting that benefit of what others would have got. To but annuity, uh, Sankit, we just started writing annuity business in this particular year. EV comprises of multi-years of business that have got written. Yeah. Yeah, Even yeah. if that is higher, it, it won't have uh, that kind of an impact. See, I'm why I'm asking again, sorry to harp on that point, uh, that, that uh, your, your economic variance number in the past broadly was in sync with the other players. Uh, this, this year is completely off. So, so, so I'm still finding it very difficult to comprehend. That's the only reason I'm asking it. Mm. Um, at this point in time, I've already explained, you know, the... Uh, okay, okay. okay. Not a, yeah. 
Yeah. On, on protection business and, and it can be online, you can explain it will be so. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think protection, uh, as we have been calling it out, that among two segments of choices that we want to grow, uh, protection, health, and annuity are uh, large opportunities available in India to continuously, uh, you know, keep uh, penetrating better into. So in line with that strategy and also the fact that uh, last few years were a bit slow from a protection business perspective, just some of that has kind of come into play and we have seen the growth of protection business happening for us. Obviously, it is supported by uh, some bit of easing that has been happening over the last uh, entire, I'll say, uh, ever since uh, COVID got over with respect to underwriting ease coming into picture as more and more confidence gets built into the kind of lives being onboarded, the kind of underwriting happening, and the kind of mortality experiences that are evident in the books. Those have helped, uh, 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 you know, uh, provide the necessary support to protection growth as well. And we continue to be very positive about individual protection business, and uh, 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 you know we will continue remaining focused on growing this faster than uh, other category growth rates. Right? At, at product level, we are maintaining the same margin, or, or we, we at, the, at the expense of growth, we, we are okay to compromise bit on margin in, in protection. I mean to say. Look, I mean at the end of the day, VNB growth is what we are trying to optimize for, and okay. even in protection, there are instances, but it's not like a sharp decline. It has to do with certain segments of choice that you try to win in, whether you're operating greater than two crore sum assured market or you know, any, any other, some of those markets. But if you ask me a very pointed question, did we see some shrinkage? Some shrinkage we have seen. I won't call it a very significant shrinkage in the margins. Perfect, perfect. And, and, and on the online business, uh, that's 79% yeah. growth. Uh, yeah. Is it, yeah, so online business actually, uh, as uh, you know, we do significant portion through our own assets called maxlikeinsurance.com. And there uh, we have, there is continuous bias on uh, uh, driving, uh, you know, uh, higher margin product forms like protection and health kind of businesses. Uh, and on aggregator business, which have an element of variability, we are actually open experimenting with both savings and uh, protection market as well. And uh, a reasonable part of the growth momentum in this particular year uh, has also come out of our uh, now strong presence in the savings market. Historically, you are aware that we have been a strong player in the e-commerce protection side where we have held on to pole position for many years, which has maintained uh, in this particular year itself. But the year saw us entering into the savings market quite significantly, where we were around 10-12% market share. Last year, we moved to almost 22-23% kind of market share uh, in the online space uh, in the savings market as well. And some of this happened on the back of a fair bit of constant innovation on products and also, you know, the launches of uh, 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 various funds that we did during the year. So, uh, which is what you will see then, I mean, I'm giving that answer, web aggregators have grown much faster than own channels, but largely because of the category that they entered into, which category was not in our base uh, in last case perspective. Perfect. Uh, got it. Uh, and thanks, thanks for your answer. Thank you. Next question is from Supratim Datta from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, you know, thanks for the opportunity. I have two follow-up questions. One is on the product innovation side. This year we have seen a lot of product innovation happen on, you know, protection or, you know, the health category. Going forward, you know, over the next one year, which of the categories, you know, do you think that there is an opportunity to introduce in products or, you know, gaps uh, or, you know, plug gaps? Yeah, you know, that could be one. And then you know, the second question is on the regulatory environment. We have seen, you know, multiple regulatory changes happen over the last one and a half years. If you could, you know, talk about, you know, how do you see the regulatory environment, you know, playing out over the next, you know, one to two years, uh, you know, that would be very helpful. Thank you. So innovation opportunities exist. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, the categories are quite well defined. Uh, you have the... Uh, the par designs, the non-par designs, the uh, annuity designs, protection designs, etc. But within that, there's always an innovation possibility either on features or stories or cash flows, and those are things that uh, we continuously do. So, of course, uh, you know, there are possibilities. For example, last year, uh, there were several things that we did, and one of them was our product Seva, uh, which has done very well and is a reason for our growth in the, uh, in the protection and health segment. Uh, so, of course, there is a pipeline of product, and uh, in our organization, rather than telling you where all it will come from, I would like to spend time on 
uh, in telling you how we approach innovation. So uh, generally there is a team dedicated to innovation. There are panels which are created with customers, the research team, the distributor, distribution partners, and constant engagement takes place. Uh, we uh, we are continuously uh, in dialogue with our partners who have better visibility in their customer segments. We are continuously looking at new segments where we could go to. So if you ask me, uh, some of that will yield, will yield outcome and will keep us on the journey of innovation. Uh, of course, there is a calendar looking at several areas. We are looking at innovation in the area of uh, protection. We are looking at innovation in the area of non power And some of that will come through as we go along. Uh, <clears throat> On, on your second question uh, with respect to uh, regulatory landscape, uh, I think overall, I think I would say uh, the regulatory regime under our respected chairman, Mr. Panda, is perhaps uh, the most favorable I've seen in many years, uh, with an exception to, uh, uh, to some of these ongoing discussions which are taking place. Uh, uh, that too, I'm very hopeful that, uh, you know, uh, it will create a win-win for the industry. I think the steps uh, that the regulator is taking is for long-term growth of the industry. If you were to go through uh, the flexibilities that got created, be it around product or distribution or, uh, you know, governance or uh, principle-based movement, simplification of uh, <clears throat> compliance, capital, uh, listing, everything that you see is quite favorable. So with that, uh, posture, regulatory posture, I'm very optimistic that as we go along, uh, we will have a supporting environment. Thank you. Thank you. We have one last question. We take the last question from the line of Bhuvnesh Kirk from Magma Ventures. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, on two questions. Firstly, on uh, EV side of it. So, in the case of uh, uh, economic variance, so how should we look at it going forward? Uh, for example, if similar scenario plays out in next uh, in, in in some uh, some year in the future, would our EV uh, economic variance would play out in a similar way, or are we going to change our strategy on this? Yeah, that's my first. Question. So there is no strategy on economic variance. It is generally hold to maturity, and that's why these are called non-operating variances. And as the market moves, uh, they will move up and down. And there won't be any inconsistency in the way it is computed and uh, uh, reported out. So if there is a change and there are many elements of it, the curve, etc., it will find its way uh, reversing back itself in non-operating variance as well. Sure, thanks. And second is question is on commissions. And now we have uh, Axis Bank has infused capital in the company. So do you see any possibility of uh, change in commission structure uh, with Axis Bank? Any thoughts on that? I think the commission structures will, will remain how they have been, and uh, we expect a, a stable environment with respect to commissions with Axis Bank. Got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll take that as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management team for closing comments. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you. and. Uh, Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being on our call, and we look forward to more such interactions. Uh, good night to everyone. Thank you very much. On behalf of Max Financial Services Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect your lines.